a little bit about myself, because I'm selfish that way. Uh, my name is Itai. For the past 27 years, I've been writing code. No, not really. I've been alive for the past 27 years. Uh, nine years of that, I've been writing code. And seven years of that in the Army. Uh, two years in a nice software company named Iguazio. Um, so I'm here to discuss about, it's funny how I call it a discussion when it's clearly uh, more of a dictatorship where I talk and you don't. Uh, so please leave the questions to the end. Um, I'm here to discuss a very painful matter, very painful subject, uh, performance. Uh, so let's start with making a bit of a distinction. So CPython is not Python. A lot of the time I hear people talk about Python and performance. Those are two different things. Python is the language, say Python is the A language engine. Look how I pointed out the A here. There are several. Uh, Python is a programming language. Uh, it's a definition of uh, language features and uh, syntax and peps. We all love pep8 and everything. So I just wanted to make this distinction beforehand. I'm forced to use my nose from a uh, cell phone, so it's not me texting. So don't feel bad about it. Um, so um, a bit of a C Python. It's used by the majority of developers and users. Uh, basically compiles your Python code into bytecode and interprets the uh, bytecode in an evaluation loop. Uh, performance is mainly limited by the GIL. I'm sure many of you have heard about the GIL. We're going to dive a little bit into it, just a little bit. Um, damn, that, that's not suppo that, that's supposed to be in the end, but I'm sure you'll, you'll forgive me. So uh, GIL is a binary semaphore that prevents multiple native threads from executing Python bytecodes at once. Uh, it must be held by the current thread before it can safely access Python objects. And uh, in order to emulate concurrency of execution, the interpreter regularly tries to switch threads. Uh, you can see the interval in which it decides when to switch threads with a set uh, switch interval. Um, now, many of you must have heard about the gil and the mutex. It's not a mutex. It's a binary semaphore. Those are two different things. Uh, basically, uh, basically, mutex is a mutual exclusion. It is used to prevent usage of shared memory objects, uh, protect them, protect resources, while a binary semaphore is used for synchronization. The difference is that, yeah, I, I will lock, I run a code, and then I, I will free it. But in binary semaphore, it is mostly used uh, for synchronization. Like, I have an event here. Take a look. Maybe you want to switch to my thread and let me run it. It is possible. So um, um, many of you heard about Gil and the problems. And uh, actually, there is a great uh, presentation on that, a great talk by David Beasley. He's actually here. Thanks for coming. Uh, great fan. This is me fangirling. Um, actually, borrowed a bit of uh, his demo about showing you how the Gil uh, hurts us. So. Uh, before I dive into that, you might think that it's a simple, simple solution. Instead of using threads, so you'll hear me better. Instead of using threads, why won't I use multiprocessing? Then each process will have its own GIL, will have uh, will have its own runtime, its own interpreter, its own v VM, and then uh, we won't have that problem. Uh, so there are pros and cons to each. Uh, some of these are debatable. Uh, for instance, most people bug me about the IPC, inter-process communication. Some people like it, some people don't, some people have issues with it. Um, but main thing that no one actually debates about, it is costly to create and destroy processes frequently. And there's nothing we can do about that. Um, just take a look to, t take a second to take it in. Um, there is another solution, not so simple one. Uh, Twisted or AsyncIO 
using asynchronous programming or event-driven programming. Actually, there was a great, uh, great talk about this, which would be great if it would be right after this one, about async.io uh, by Sim. Um, maybe some of you have been to, it's pretty, pretty cool. So I'm not gonna dive into this option. It is cool, I'm just gonna explain the idea. So this is a synchron synchronous model. There are three tasks. Uh, we run one task, we finish it, we run the second one, then we run the third one until we're done. Uh, there is the threaded model, which we, we try to run all of them simultaneously, but like we heard about the GIL, they don't really run simultaneously. It's emulated as if it runs sim simultaneously. And then there's the event-driven programming. The idea is to understand that each task is, uh, is basically a sub smaller tasks, and uh, each time one of those uh, enters a blocking function, an I.O. operation or something that it can't, it can't, uh, it just has to wait for it, then we switch the context to another event and go on with that one until it gets free and then we just use it, that way we can uh, have uh, better performance. Now this is a tough model, first of all, it's tough to understand where using Python isn't really written for this. So basically, you need to write code entirely different in order to write event-driven programming in Python. Um, it has a very high learning curve, it's, at least if you ask me, I use it. Uh, and there is, a, I will, all of the stuff that I recommend here, there are thanks at the end. Uh, there is a blog by I don't remember his name, but the blog name is Cromdo, which explains a bit about this and about Twisted. If anyone wants to dive more into this, then I highly recommend it. Um, so when, I suppose to had another slide to run this demo. Um, sorry, wrong demo. Yeah, I will in a sec. So this is a very simple application. Uh, thanks, David. You probably recognized it, the idea of it at least. So uh, basically what we do here, we have a counter. We count uh, till, I don't know, let's see, 100 mil. Uh, we do it twice. So this will take some time, not too much. So this is, of course, unthreaded. This doesn't. This is in, isn't limited by the gill. Um, it takes 8.8 .8 seconds. Um, just one thing. You see, this is very important to every time we sp speak about performance. Uh, the first real rule of performance is anyone can guess. Yeah, don't talk about the performance. That's right. So I'm talking about performance, so uh, my hanging will be done tomorrow. Um, but the second rule of uh, performance is always measure yourself. Measure everything. Uh, if we don't measure ourselves, we can tell if we're, we have an, a performance problem, if we need to get better performance, and if we do try, if we actually achieved what we wanted to. Um, so this is a very simple code, uh, well this is a bit more problem. This is where I enter threads. This is still the same function. Oh wait, you can see it. Now you see everything, great. So uh, I, I added threads, um, starting time for measurement, starting the threads, waiting for them to finish, and then I will print the time. Now, can anybody guess how long this should take? Uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Why a little bit more? 
Okay, that's right. So what he said is, he said it a little bit more. Um, if we think about the Fred model, the idea it should take half the time, but because of the gill uh, and the context switch between it and the fact that it doesn't really run simultaneously, we will get this. Uh, it will be a little bit more. I'm guessing 13 seconds, maybe 14. Um, I had guess kind of right. So um, as we as we can see, it takes a little bit more. We don't really gain anything from the gill because of the gill. We don't gain performance by using threads in C Python, and uh, you can see it here. Now, so when should I use C Python? There's a lot of debate here. Um, some would say GUI applications using C Python with threads. Um, because the main thread basically waits for an event, a user event, and every time that a user event occurs, uh, the background can open a thread in the background which will execute whatever it is the user wanted to achieve. Uh, another one is network servers. It's about the same idea, but instead of waiting for a user event, we wait for a request, an I.O., basically. Then every time that it happens, we just do a thread to calculate whatever it is, the response we want to create, and then use the main thread to just push it back to the user, to the, to the client. Uh, this is the demo that I just showed you. It should be beforehand. Um, so an option we can use in order to achieve higher performance is uh, PyPy. Uh, it supports all the core languages. It is a, an engine like CPython, uh, passes all the Python test suites, which means it is interchangeable, basically interchangeable. It's not true I'm going to touch what is problematic. And uh, supports most of the commonly used Python standard library. You can see it here. Uh, SSL, actually, no, this is underscore. So anyway, math, uh, CMath, a lot of stuff that we usually use. Uh, it is built using our Python language and co-developed with it. Uh, framework for the uh, our Python, Python is a framework for producing implementations of dynamic languages like Python. Uh, it is able to automatically generate a JIT compiler for any dynamic languages, which is exactly what it did in this case of uh, PyPy. And basically, because our Python it implements a JIT compiler in Python, um, it has some other features which I heard were great. I myself haven't used any of these. Uh, stackless and lightweight concurrent programming, also known as greenlets. Um, if you want to dive more into it, just go to the pypy.org and enjoy. So, this is. Uh, PyPy still has a gill. Uh, even we will use gil, uh, the JIT. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to. Yeah. Um, so, even though it uses the JIT, it still uh, uses the gill. So, basically, Concurrent threads doesn't use concurrently. Um, so I want to talk to you about an option that PyPy is trying to achieve to get to achieve um, getting rid of the gill. Um, so this is the basic function. Um, it has problems. Uh, if we try to because list one and list two are shared memory spaces, if we try to run it in several threads, um, it could be problematic for us. So the basic idea of Gil, we just acquire the lock, like so, and then we pop, we do whatever we want, then we release it. So this, is ma this makes sure that nobody else could go into the list one and pop stuff that we expected to be popped right now. Um, so PyPy is trying to achieve getting rid of the Gil using something called STM, Software Transaction of Memory. The idea is very similar to relational DB, Transactions. So basically, take the same function, and instead of running it, this doesn't do everything. You just write the I/O you want to achieve, the shared memory, the stuff you want to touch the shared memory in, and you use a transaction. This is local memory. This is created here in this function, and only on the commit, it will actually do stuff to the shared memory. So uh, it tries to achieve the commit to, to commit it after after it got decided what it wants to do, and then it tries. If it if it succeeds, great, go out, break, break, 
Uh, if it doesn't, then it'll just try to do the same thing over again and try again. Just a sec. So, uh, I, I mentioned the, the JIT, the just-in-time. Now, a bit of explanation, what is it, and how do we achieve higher performance using it? Um, JIT compilation is done during runtime, during execution. So the idea, this is a lot of text, you can just forget about it and just listen to me. The idea is, during runtime, we just calculate what would we achieve in performance if we compile a section of the code. Now, the JIT calculates it. And uh, if it measures and see that it will achieve high performance using it, it also uh, uh, takes, takes the idea of compilation itself as part of it. If it sees that it, it will achieve speed, then it just executes. It just compiles it. And then the compiler, the runtime, is able to use that code compiled again and again and again. Uh, in theory, JIT compilation can yield faster execution than static compilations. Uh, .NET uses it, Java uses it. Uh, it's great, and it's completely transparent. You don't feel it, you just have an uh, interpreter the same way. And a little demo about it. I'll, just a sec. So, let's just run it, then I'll open it to let you see what we're running. So, this is FibPy. Uh, this code basically runs a Fibonacci series calculation. Uh, in this case, the 35th uh, number in the series. It is run using threads, and it is every time it creates more threads. The prints that you will see is number of threads running the same calculation, which is the same code, basically. And uh, how long it takes to finish with all the threads, join all the threads, and uh, finish the calculation. Um, this is Python 2.7. Uh, don't get mad of me. I know most of you might think that it's supposed to be 3.6. Just for the record, 3.6 still has a gill. Of course, it still has a gill. The um, execution times, the performance is about the same. Uh, it used to be much worse. Uh, 3.x had it, uh, performance issues. In this case, it will be about the same. Um, now this is, as you can see, much faster using PyPy. So if one thread running it took 3.6 seconds, oh, let you see it better. Uh, took 3.6 uh, seconds and higher with two, three, four threads. PyPy takes a fraction of that. Uh, now the jump uh, in performance using two threads. To tell the truth, I have no idea why this happens. I encountered it before. I have no explanation of this. Uh, and it's always in two threads. Um, there is a um, presentation, a talk that currently is running in, uh, I think, uh, room number one, uh, which actually the guy who gets the talk going is a PyPy core developer. Maybe he can let me understand this, but currently I don't. Anyway, as you can see, in much higher performance, probably what we see is the fib, the JIT, compile the fib, and then it ran it with a much higher performance rate. Um, and the th another thing I wanted to show you is how I use, I'll close this, how I use PyPy. So I have PyPy installed. As you can see, I opened the PyPy uh, interpreter, just the same as Python, it even says Python 2.7. But as you can see here, this is PyPy. Now, the easiest way, if you ask me to use it, I'll just run this thing, which will create, of course, a virtual env for me. 
and this current uh, deer. And then when I source it, uh, I'm in a virtual environment. When I open Python, it opens the same thing as PyPy. Also, when I install stuff, like uh, pip install, it will install for my PyPy uh, environment. Um, like so. Uh, this will take a bit of time, so I'm not gonna wait for it. Um, there is an issue with PyPy, which uh, should be mentioned. C extensions. So basically stuff which we usually use for data, uh, stuff like NumPy, SciPy, uh, don't work well. Uh, they're still working on it. I want to believe they'll achieve it, but currently the performance rate for C extensions are less than C Python. Uh, also, let's just go back here. Um, there is another problem that JIT needs time to heat itself. Needs to get ready to get prepared. If you're running a simple script that it's just a one-off that takes a couple like a second, you won't achieve much. Maybe even the performance will be less so than C Python. Uh, that's because JIT needs time to warm up, and uh, you won't gain any performance because of it. So if you're running a very long script, very long process, something that will um, something that will uh, run for ages, I guess. It will get time to compile whatever it needs, whatever it thinks it will gain uh, speed, and then you get performance boost. So, like I said, long running processes. Uh, and another thing is the C extension problem. So when you use pure Python code, you will get a better performance. Um, now the moment that I'm sure many of you, that's the reason why you're here, that's grumpy. Now, before I'm getting into it, I want to start with, I don't work for Google. So a lot of these are assumptions. Just to let you know how, how much of it is assumptions. Well, I'm guessing they call it Grumpy and not Grumpy because P would be capitalized otherwise. Um, so let's start with a sec. So, so Google has YouTube, as we all know and love. I, I don't know how I would survive without cats, uh, cat videos. Uh, it is written in C Python, lots of code, and it serves millions of requests per second. So um, this uh, immediately raises alarm for training C Python, Gil, performance, what exactly to do. Now, uh, Google said that they tried to achieve as much uh, performance boost as they could and optimize their code. Uh, but I guess they stuck in some kind of a glass ceiling or something because uh, they decided to implement an alternative runtime optimized for real-time serving. Um, now, Google has another project, which is great, by the way, Go. Don't stall me because I recommend another language in a Python conference, please. Uh, I, I will also say that Python is my favorite. It's the best language in the world. Give it up for Python, come on. So they decided to use Go. Go is great. They have a great, um, great garbage collection, which is not reference counted, using reference counting. Uh, also, they have something called Go Routines, which is a very, very lightweight thread. It's not really threads. One Go routine is not, not equal one uh, system thread, one uh, OS thread. Um, and basically what it lets you do is create many of those. You can run much more Go routines simultaneously and unlike threads. And um, killing them and creating them uh, is much more efficient. So Grumpy was born because using Go. So what is Grumpy? So it is a source of transcompiler in runtime, which means, like you see here, they take the, go the Python code, put it in this old thing that grinds stuff, grind it, and uh, have Go code. Uh, it has no VM. It doesn't work with uh, bytecode like, uh, like Python, like C Python. Uh, it has no GIL. 
It uses Go's garbage collection, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, it uses Go's Go routine. It does not support C extensions. I heard they're working on it. I heard they don't want to. I'm not sure what happens there. They don't give us much. They gave us one blog post uh, for developers. And they have the grumpy, um, the grumpy GitHub, uh, which has a roadmap. It's not very clear. It, it, it said that they don't want to do C accession, but if you see solution um, issues on it, you see they have some talk about the C extensions. Um, now they have many. They started in January, or at least published it in January. As you can see, they implemented some of Python. They have decorators, um, lambdas, and then you start to see stuff that isn't implemented yet. Uh, buffer arrow, byte array, and then it goes worse. No filter, no format. That's why my code, uh, I need to apologize about it. It looks horrible. No filter yet, no input. Now, this is all the list they started implementing. If I remember correctly, a map was implemented about a month ago. And let's see Grumpy in action. First, I'll let you see the demo thing. Uh, it runs uh, PyPy. I got rid of CPython. PyPy is now the time to bit, let's call it. And um, we basically go to the Grumpy I cloned it, Grumpy GitHub uh, repo. And then I'll cat, I'll just push it, then make run. And then it'll just run it. It's very simple. Now, let's see. So, 100 threads this time. Not one, not two, not three. 100 thread. It took a lot less time for Grumpy. Now, it took a lot of time for me to actually find um, an example in which Grumpy has better performance. Um, I'm sorry, but they have, I'll even show it to you. This. This is Grumpy source code. Now, it has a benchmark. It has all sorts of tasks, call, compression, dict, they implemented themselves. And now running this in both Py, uh, Grumpy and PyPy achieves higher results every time for PyPy. This is actually pretty sad. So I precompiled some of those stuff. This is dict. Um, what you see here is, um, is operations per second. Now, this is a bit confusing because of the, uh, I'll run it also in PyPy. Now, this is a bit confusing because of the, E complete. So let's do this. Let's take the get item and see. We have here nine million. And in get item here we have ten actually it's one hundred and seven mil. So that's not a close one. Much more patient seconds. But because of go routines, after I finally, two days ago, four o'clock in the morning, I found this uh, the idea of running a lot of threads and running it with a very, very small number of. Um, of, well, a very small tasks instead of large ones. And this will take ages to run. I even tried it, don't tell Iguazio, but on a very, very strong machine. Um, this gives us this. Um, the X here is uh, the number in the Fibonacci series. Well, uh, y, y, but this is horizontal and the uh, 
the time in seconds. As you can see, Grumpy has a couple multitudes of high performance uh, until it gets to 17. And then it gets much, much worse. At 36, I think it was 50 seconds. And some of you might think maybe they meet again. Well, I ran it, like I said, on machines. I didn't get to it, even on uh, 100. Fibonacci number 100 in the series. Um, so that's it. So we have a very specific case where you have tons, which makes sense. They, do, they did write this for YouTube. So um, when you have lots of uh, Go routines, lots of threads, and uh, they do simple tasks, then you get higher performance in Grumpy, basically. Now just to show you, if some of you might think, some of you might think that, okay, may maybe I just want to switch to Go. Maybe I'll just compile all my current Python code and use that, uh, the Go uh, generated. Well, okay, not good. Maybe it's in Fib1. Yes, it is. So, this is how I compile. I, I showed you in the demo how I run stuff without getting the output of the Go code. Uh, this this is how I compile stuff. I'll go to Grumpy, the cloned uh, repo. I'll enter, I need to install Go, I need to install uh, Python, of course, and then I need to give it a Go path, and then I use a tool named Grumpsy. I make, I build, I compile the Grumpy. Uh, I use a tool named Grumpsy, and give it the code I want to compile to Go, and let it just give it an output, where to output it to. And then I, uh, I get a compiler, I also get uh, the Go and also the compiled version. So, Let's compile it. Doesn't take much. The make says nothing to, do, to be done at all because I already compiled the Grumpy. But uh, I, I see most of you are sitting. That's great because this is horrible. Uh, you should sit. This is the generated Go code. Now I'll put it side by side for you. This is 32 lines. This is 473 lines. Um, it isn't written well. It's not usable. You can change. It. You can if you wanna. If you have like uh, tendencies, several tendencies, which I don't want to go into. Uh, this is not very useful. It also, because of the thing that is generated, you can see here, line 26, uh, line 24. Uh, it's not very efficient as well. People who do know Go will see that it's not very efficient, but I'm not going to dive into it. So that's that. So when should I use Gumpy? Like I said, when you're using a lot of threads, uh, each executing a very small task, then go ahead, be my guess, it's great. But again, don't count on it for, um, for using it for the Go. Um, when you need to use any of, of the Go libraries, well, when it compiles the, Go, uh, the threads to Go, it uses Go routines. Uh, and also, you can import Go libraries, which ha Go has great libraries, stuff like uh, logging and uh, web handling. Uh, don't throw stuff at me, Flask and Django lovers. Uh, but Go is pretty, pretty rad. So uh, when, you want to, when you need to use any of the Go libraries, go ahead and use Grumpy. But I wouldn't recommend using it yet. If you see, if you take a look at the, the roadmap for Go, uh, you can see that by September, I think, they're planning to run the, to pass the test suites for, a Python, for C Python, for Python. Uh, but it's not there yet. I would wait a bit. So um, this is bas the basic compar uh, comparison between the three. Uh, C Python, like I said, is the reference point. It's implemented alongside with Python, the language. So everything is implemented in C Python first. Uh, it is written in C and has a GIL. Uh, it compiles it to bytecode. It has a VM. PyPy is run 
with JIT, which is awesome. Just uh, to remind you to show you the results again. Just a sec. Um, sorry, one, one to the left. So this is the Papa. Now I remind you, it doesn't run simultaneously. Not really. It still has a gill, and still achieves such a better results on this this particular test. Um, and there's Grumpy, which uh, does create Go from your Python, but it's not good Go from your Python. Uh, it has no VM, it uses garbage collection, it uses Go routines. And again, oops, don't, don't kill me. It's not a mutex. Again, it's a binary uh, semaphore. Uh, it must be held. And PyPy uses JIT, like I said. Go has no gill, uses Go's garbage collection. Now, just a sec. Let's try this for once. So, if any of you will go to your phones and just enter this, this will allow you to ask questions. I still take questions from the audience this way. But then I will see, you can also vote on questions somebody else asked and then you can just vote instead of asking it again. Um, I'd like to thank people like David Beasley here uh, about the gill, uh, stuff about the gill. Uh, this is uh, Dave has the best blog, the best, it, it's more of a book than a blog about using async, uh, async programming. Um, this is a bit of code I stole from Reddit. I didn't really stole it, I changed it. But he says that Python is 100 times faster than Grumpy. It's not exactly true. Uh, the PyPy blogs, which talk about the gill and how they try to uh, kill it. And Stack Overflow is basically the same as uh, the same level as that everybody needs to thank to. Like, thanks my mom and dad who brought me here today. It's about the same thing. Uh, some questions that were uh, asked in uh, Stack Overflow. Uh, any private question, you can send it to my Gmail. And let's see if any, none, any questions from the audience? Yes, go ahead. Write the same code exactly in Go. They did not to go and use Go routines and write uh, good Go code. I haven't, to, to tell the truth. Uh, but this is not actually what the, the speak, the, the talk is about. This is not a comparison between Python, C Python, or any of them to go. This is about uh, different Python runtimes and uh, implementations. So I could, maybe, maybe it would be better, but maybe it worse. It's not for this talk. Anyone else? Uh, when you cut your beard, my grandfather asks the same questions every time I go to England to visit him. I have no idea. This is mostly because I'm lazy, I guess. Any other questions? No? Yes? Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>